What's the word, y'all? Welcome back, man. It's been uh, it's been eight days since we last uploaded, and I've been looking at the comment section. People thought it was over. People thought the Kenny for real streak was gone, but nah. I just needed a little time to myself to just get my head back in the right space when it comes to content creation. I ain't uploaded on none of my channels, y'all. You know what I'm saying? But I'm back. In 2022, I got a, a different mindset and different goals, and I'm here to talk about hoops with y'all, man. And I I do want to say 99% of this video is about to be Chicago Bulls related because I'm I'm on cloud nine right now. What, what can I really say? Um, but let's quickly talk about the other things that happened in the association tonight so you can't say it was all Chicago Bulls. Giannis had another MVP-type performance, 35, 16, and 10 elite. Hamidou Diallo's averaging 30-plus points per game in his last three games, but Sadiq Bey hit a game run in the corner, which is – Similar to DeMar DeRozan's three-pointer, it was same corner, double-teamed, but DeMar did it at the exact buzzer. We talked about the Bulls, DeMar DeRozan shot. Um, the, the Brooklyn Nets blew a game to the Clippers, who are missing a million people, thanks to, to Eric Bledsoe going straight at James Harden 100% of the time. Um, Jalen Green shot a million free throws, and then the Warriors beat the Utah Jazz just a couple days after they beat the Phoenix Suns without Draymond Green tonight, and they look scary. Okay, let's talk about the Bulls. DeMar DeRozan. Um, um, you just experience greatness if you were watching these games. DeMar DeRozan becomes the first player in NBA history to hit buzzer-beating game winners on back-to-back -back nights. Now, Larry Bird hit buzzer-beater game winners in back-to-back -back games back in the day, but Larry Bird needed a day of rest. DeMar DeRozan did not. <laughs> DeMar DeRozan did not. And listen, y'all know we always preaching the mantra, enjoy basketball, enjoy basketball, enjoy basketball, and that's all I've been trying to do this season. And, and if you would have told me before the season started that the Bulls would be the number one seed 34 games to the season. I would have called you crazy because the most optimistic side of me as a Bulls fan was like, ah, this team could be a four seed. And you know what? The four seed is still up for play because though we are the one seed right now, um, the Bucks are one game behind, the, the Nets are one game behind, and then the Heat are two game behind. So like a week from now, the Bulls lose two games and boom, they're back they're at the four seed. But I did not expect in my wildest dreams that we would be the number one team right now. And you know what? DeMar DeRozan hit these game winners yesterday against the Indiana Pacers and, and then today, right? And I do what every NBA fan would do. When your favorite team walks off a game with a W, you are excited. And with me being in the age of the internet, I, I tweet through it. You know what I'm saying? I do not live tweet Bulls games anymore. I don't know if y'all noticed that. I do not live tweet Bulls games anymore. But if you go hit a game winner, I'm going to tweet it. So it's like DeMar DeRozan with a bunch of ants. And this is how this is just, just the internet is such a crazy place. And I hope I want more people to do the the enjoy basketball thing or, or live by that. Because I tweeted after DeMar DeRose won like a game winner over the Indiana Pacers. Just with excitement because my favorite team just won a game on a crazy, crazy shot. And the replies. I would say, listen, I would say 96% of the replies were positive and just excited because that was a crazy shot. But then you got that 4%. And, you know, I said this when John Morant, you remember a couple weeks ago, John Morant came back from his injury and then some court staff fan said something to John that made him go MIA on Instagram and Twitter and stuff because they said uh, you should sit out again. And I was mentioning how there's a million Grizzlies fans that love John Morant and happy to have him. But he paid attention to that one fan that said something negative. That's how I felt with my DeMar DeRozan game winner because this is what those 4% of the players are like. Enjoy it now because when the playoffs come around, he's going to be back to DeMar DeFrozen. Took all of that to be the depleted Indiana Pacers team. Let me have my moments, y'all. I have never in my life seen someone excited as a, as a sports fan and been like, mm -mm, I want to I wanna try to try to end that for them. <laughs> and that's what, I, that's what I experienced. And this is what I have to say. If we go to the, well, not if we go to the playoffs. Is it, we're locked into the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen. Once we get to the playoffs, if DeMar DeRozan is not the DMVP like he's been playing right now, I'm not going to be upset because what I can say with confidence is that these first 34 games of the season have been the most fun I've had as a Bulls fan since Derrick Rose won MVP. And I wouldn't trade that in. So if he does struggle in the playoffs like he has done in the, in the previous years, I'm not even really that mad. Of course, I want to see my team be successful. I want to see my team go on a championship run, but I'm not tripping because at the end of the day, if you watch any of my videos from the last three years, I've always said, I just want to have a good basketball team. I want to be able to wake up when my team has a game day, look at the schedule and be like, we can win tonight. And we hadn't had that for five years. The last time the Bulls were on a seven game win streak, I was a junior in high school. I am 25 now. That's how long it's been since I've been able to watch seven straight games and get W after W after W. 
So I don't really, of course, again, I want to see my team be successful playoff time, but I'm happy right now. And that there's no, there's nothing that I value more than that. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to DeMar DeRozan. And I keep getting uh, added in tweets. Shout out to y'all because people been calling him king of the fourth quarter. And guess what, DeMar? It's yours, my boy. I came up with the KOT for a Q thing. I was 12 years old. Like I mentioned, I am 25. When was the last time you saw me refer to myself on any of my channels as king of the fourth quarter? Every one of my channels, other than the main channel, because it would be crazy to change it, is Kenny something. Because I'm Kenny. It's Kenny for real. Kenny 2. Kenny Baseball, which, what happened to Kenny Baseball? I don't know what happened to Kenny Baseball. Um, so, DeMar, you can have it. You know, it seems like every couple years a player does something to get that name. And I'm just like, when Isaiah Thomas had it, I'm like, here you go, Isaiah. You can have it. It's all yours, my boy. Because I don't really care about the, the name means nothing to me. It's I'm, What have I done to get the name? <laughs> we talk about DeMar DeRozan's here, two back-to-back game winners. Isaiah Thomas was scoring 20 points in the fourth quarter. They deserve those names. Um, let's talk about DMVP because that has been a topic of conversation on Twitter and on uh, Reddit and Instagram over the past couple of days because we see somebody lead a team to the number one team in the Eastern Conference at this moment and hit back-to-back game winners and just for, for the entirety of the season, he's been dominating. I mean, he is number one when it comes to points in the fourth quarter. He's shooting 53% from the field in the fourth quarter. He's shooting 50% from three in the fourth quarter and he don't really miss his free throws in the fourth. So, um, let's talk about the idea of DMVP. In my mind, at this point, 34 games to the season, for, mo- for at least for the Bulls, I still see this as a four-man race with a potential to make it five. I still see Giannis, Steph Curry, uh, uh, Kevin Durant, and Jokic above DeMar or even de- above Joel Embiid, who has uh, crept his way into the conversation as well, in my opinion. Um, but it, if you were to tell me, oh, I got DeMar DeRozan three or I got DeMar DeRozan two, I'm not saying you crazy. I mean, he is the number one player the big shot maker and taker on the the number one team in the East right now. You know what I'm saying? Think think about the history of the award. We're talking about a guy that's going to be the best player on one of the top teams in the league. DeMar DeRozan has that. And at this point, he's got the moments too. He's even got the narrative. Go bring up the Bleach Report article. Worst offseason signing of 2021, DeMar DeRozan. That is the narrative. He's got the moments, game winners, game winners, and big moments against the Lakers where he dropped 38 and another big moment where he dropped 38. He's got the moments. He's got the narrative. He's got the team success at this moment. He's, see, I, think, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but when it comes to my favorite, I'm so not used to my favorite team being relevant that I don't know if some of the stuff that I see is bias, right? I just don't know. So you tell me in the comment section, where do you see DeMar DeRozan in the MVP ranking? Because I low-key just talked myself into putting bro into the top whatever, He's got the counting stats and the great statistics. He's got the moments. He's got the narrative. And he's got the number one team in the conference at this moment. What else can you... Now, I did see some people on Twitter um, say that, hey, though it's great, um, um, the fact that he's playing with Zach Levine, who was equally as good, may deter it from um, him from being in the real conversation. This makes sense. Though Zach Levine ain't the one hitting the shots in the moment, we know Zach Levine has hit the shots sometimes this season, and he's still averaging a crazy, crazy thing. But what I will say is the fact that the NBA has classified DeMar DeRozan as a guard still? Even if my boy ain't in the MVP conversations, he's definitely in all-NBA first-team conversations because he's a guard. Bro, I don't want to ruin this for DeMar, but NBA, he's not really playing guard this season. (laughs) He's not really playing guard this season. I'm just being honest with you. But, hey, we'll take it. (laughs) We'll take it. Ask me who my starting backcourt of the All-Star game is. I'm going to tell you it's the two boys in Chicago. And that might be biased, and I don't really care. It's my vote. Um, I'm, I'm just overall just pretty pleased with the way this season has gone. Um, and, and today, and even yesterday, those are two games where we should not have won. We got outplayed by the Washington Wizards today. Bradley Beal, that point guard, was dicing us up. They were getting to the basket at will. Kyle Kuzma was hitting shots. Daniel Gaffer was killing us. We gave up like 74 points in the paint. 74 points in the paint. But we won the game. And a lot of that, again, DeMar DeRozan hitting that big shot, but Zach Levine had a couple great possessions down the stretch. Um, Kobe White is playing some of his best basketball of the season, another 20-point game. I think that's three in a row for Kobe White. Um, uh, Vucevic hit a big-time shot down the stretch. Ayo DeSumo, even though he almost fouled out, he took the responsibility of trying to guard DeMar, um, um, Bradley Beal. It, you know? And until, like, the last couple minutes of the game, we only had four people score. And that was Kobe, that was Zach, that was Vuce, and that was DeMar. We are heavily depleted right now, just like every other team. I'm not saying we're different. Honestly, I would say that the Bulls heavily lucked out. 
Um, because because before ninety percent of the league was in health and safety protocol, the Bulls were the, the Bulls were were patient zero. They were they were the first people to get ravished by health and safety protocol. And the NBA was like, we're gonna postpone three of their games. Now again, I'm saying they lucked out because we had teams out there like the Atlanta Hawks who have who have had to play through that stuff. And what have they done? They've lost like two of the three games they had to play through with all these health and safety protocols. So the Bulls have lucked out. Because when DeMar, I mean, not when DeMar, when Zach was out and Caruso was out and this player was out and this player was out, I, I'm being honest with you. Those games that got postponed were probably going to be losses. And because of that, we probably wouldn't be, not probably, we wouldn't be the number one team in the conference right now. So the Bulls heavily lucked out. And I would be delusional to say otherwise. But I'm happy we did. <laughs> I'm definitely happy we did because right now I'm taking a screenshot of these standings and I don't care what happened for the rest of the season. I was here for this moment. I was here for this moment. You know? Um, and and I guess the next conversation when it comes to the Chicago Bulls or whether or not they're legitimate contenders, um, and in and, and my mind, and I know this varies for a lot of people, when I think about a contender, I'm thinking about a team that if they won the championship this season, I would not be surprised. So if the Warriors won a championship this season, I wouldn't be surprised. They're a contender. If the Suns won a championship this season, I would not be surprised. If the Bucks won a championship, the next won a championship, if the if the Heat even won a championship, I would not be surprised. I don't have the Bulls there just yet. Again, as fun as it has been, and I am still on cloud nine, I'm not saying it's impossible for them to do it. But I still, even though they're the number one team in the conference, I still don't see them as the top, top of the top when it comes to teams in the NBA. And again, that could be my... Me trying to defer my biases because I don't know, man. Y'all know we just be rambling around here. I just, I don't know. I, f I feel like if we were to go against the Bucks in a seven-game series, we don't have an answer for Giannis. I feel like we, I know we have beat the Nets twice this season. I know, and it's been great. But a seven-game series is a little bit different than that random regular season game in, in December, December 3rd. If that was the right day, that's fire, but I don't think it was. You know? I would still be happy. You know what I'm saying? If we got to if we could I see us as a conference finals team? Hell yeah. But like, I think this team has some pretty big issues and that a lot of that is dealing with the power four position. I love me some Javante Green. I love that Derrick Jones Jr. stepped in as a guy that can play some four and some five. It's great. But when we get down to the nitty-gritty of the playoffs, we need more impact there. And that's why I don't envy the guys in the front office because they have some really tough decisions to make this this um, this um trade deadline. Because we got pieces. We got younger pieces that a selling team or a team that, that has a piece that we would want would be interested in. And our front office has to figure out, is it worth trading for Patrick, uh, trading away Patrick Williams? Is it worth trading away Kobe White as he started to look very, very good since he's been a starter since Lonzo has been out? Those are the conversations that I know that they're having internally in the front office. And I, I'm so happy I don't have to have those conversations because I don't really know. Because you got to think about it like this. DeMar DeRozan, as great as he's been, again, he, he DMVP in the conversations. Next year when Patrick Williams is back, do you think that we're getting this type of productivity from DeMar DeRozan? Or the year after that where Patrick Williams might be even better? Or the year after, you know what I'm saying? This might be the best version of DeMar DeRozan we ever see again. So I'm sure there's a side of, of the people that are talking. It's like, we got to go for it. We got to go. And it's probably another side. I was like, I don't know that Patrick, Patrick Williams has a ton of untapped potential. A ton of untapped potential. I know there are teams out there that are like, hey, we will take Patrick Williams and let that boy be the, the our future. And what I will say before any decision is made. I stand by the front office until they show me otherwise because every single move that they've done so far has been a success. Now, you got some that maybe not be as successful. Um, we traded Daniel Gafford and, and, and got back Troy Brown Jr., but part of that was because we didn't want to pay Daniel Gafford. He ended up getting a contract. Shout out to Shout out to the homie. And shout out to uh, Troy Brown Jr. That's the homie too. Both of them are the homies. Um, but every other move that we've had has been an absolute W. So until they show me that they got a miss in them, whatever they do with this deadline, if they trade P. Willie, listen, I can still be a fan of you, Pat, if you in Detroit or you in some other place. I'm going to back my front office, man. I'm going to back my front office. You feel me? 
until they show me otherwise. They made the right decision bringing in Billy Donovan. They made the right decision tampering and getting Lonzo. Thank you for that. <laughs> they made the right decision giving Alice Caruso whatever money he got paid. The the Vucevic trade, even though Vucevic hasn't been the, the all-star that he was last year, even the year before that, he's been very good, by the way, especially re recently when it comes to his defense. Um... That trade is a W because you watch any interview with DeMar DeRose and since he signed with the Bulls, they ask him why, and he won't say the money because obviously the money played a big part. We paid him. But the second part was, hey, Vucevic gave me a call. If Vucevic is in Orlando, there's no call. So I love to see that Wendell Carter and Franz Wagner are hooping their ass off, but I'm so happy that we made that trade. The One of the rare trades where it seems like a W for both sides. So they got to they gotta show me when they catch an A.O. Listen. We'll evaluate everything else after that. But right now, I'm just super excited. Um, the Bulls have played, I think, five games in eight nights, and they've won all five. Again, this is not a game we deserve to win. There were a few um, interesting foul calls, I will say. Shout out to Denny Abdiya, Kenny Freer, All-Star. He's playing some great defense today. He got, he may have got a phantom call or two down the stretch. I'm, <laughs> listen, I, I love my Bulls, but I'm going to tell you how it is. He may have got a, we may have got a couple calls down the stretch. But regardless, I am so excited. I don't even know what's next on the docket. Who do we got next? Um, we got the Orlando Magic. Okay, that's Jan th 3. And then we got Washington coming up again. And hopefully by that time, both teams will be relatively healthy because they were missing some players too. Spencer Dinwiddie is out. I don't. At this point of the NBA season, I don't know who's out with health and safety protocol, who's out with an actual injury. I know they're missing Spencer Dinwiddie, no Montrez Harrell. They were missing a lot of players. Uh, Tremont Waters was getting minutes today. Um, so we play again Jan 7th. We'll see how that goes. I mean, the Bulls schedule ain't that sweet, bro. We got Orlando, who are 7-29. Then we got the Washington Wizards. Then we got the Dallas Mavericks. Then we got Brooklyn again. Then the Warriors. So this is about to be another very, very good stretch. I would love to see my Bulls go on a 10-game winning streak. I know I'm jumping the gun just a little bit, but just that double-digit win streak just look, oh, look magnificent. Um, but let me know what you think about the Bulls overall, man. What do you think about DeMar DeRose's MVP candidacy? What do you think about um, the Bulls, whether or not you consider them contenders? Because my boy Cone, he put out a tweet yesterday after they hit the game winner against the Pacers and asked his um his followers are the Bulls contenders and the results were 75 yes. And that was a surprising one to me. Maybe I'm lower on the Bulls because that's me trying to not be biased. I don't really know. You let me know in the comment section, man. DeMar DeRozan, you can have the name, king of the fourth quarter. It's all yours, my boy. You deserve it.